everyone, welcome to uh, this Animate uh, closed session interview. My name is uh, Patty Hawkins, and my guest today is uh, Jake Paik. Yeah. Did I pronounce that correctly? You got it right. Okay, it good. Jake yes, Pake. very good. I can't tell you that I'm, I'm one of the few people in this in this whole convention, I think. Well, I took the time to look it up. I freely Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. A lot of times when you know I'm doing an interview, they'll either they'll leave the last name out or they'll like hazard it and get it wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is. It rhymes. It's Jake Pig. I'm here with I'm here with Jackie P here. Yeah. Or Jake P or Jack Pack. I got a lot of different. Uh, um, the, the, the Jake Man. <laughs> Jake Man. I did. Uh, I interviewed actor uh, Rene Abner Waugh uh, mm-hmm. a few mm-hmm. months ago, and that was a mouthful because everybody. <laughs> I had, I looked up three different sources just to make sure I absolutely got it right. And yeah. sure enough, even online, you know, he's on the like, Today Show or something. Ray Abner Noisy. Oh, nice. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he, he was too much of a gentleman to correct him, and sure he's ruined his whole life. So I think it's interesting. Like uh, sometimes people are too embarrassed to ask how to pronounce a name, but at the same time, like. I feel like most people are really much more okay with that than, you know, having it get butchered, you know, a quick thing like, like, hey, is it, is it Pack or Pake? I just go, oh, it's Pake. <laughs> are you paying me? You can call me whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, let's go, let's go. So, uh, let's, uh, let's take it back to the beginning. Um, how do how did you get started so into... So, my parents met in... Right, oh, wait, no, okay. okay well, we can start from there as too. <laughs> so, uh, you, you start out in, in, with all intentions... Traditional acting, which you still do as it is, and you mm. fell into the the voice acting niche the way a lot of modern voice actors have. How did that uh, How did that evolve? Um, it's a pretty yeah. You're you're 100 right. It really was like a kind of a tributary to the river of things uh, that I was chasing, and it became like just a much larger. It kind of became the river. <laughs> yeah, uh, which has been amazing. Um, the story is is I feel like for a lot of us, it's really it's kind of crazy. Um, this I was shooting. Nobody ever at. gets in the same way twice. It's like Narnia. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, you know, because everybody always asks, how do you do a voice actor? And I've done so many of the interviews. I always want to say, it's literally like Narnia, man. You never get there the same way twice. They can tell you how they got into it, but you'll never get into it the way they did. You exactly. got to... It's like a POW camp. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> dig your own tunnel, bro. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, there's no blueprint. You know yeah. what I mean? You can't. I can't hand somebody like what happened to me and be like, you chase that because uh-huh. uh, that would that probably wouldn't work for anybody. Yeah. Um. But for me, it uh, it started with like you know circumstance and then just like pursuing making things on my own, which I've always done as well. Like even since I was a kid, it's what got me into acting in the arts. Like I always loved making things. Like I was doing stories with my Lego characters yeah. and you know making stories from action figures and all that. Um, and so when I moved to New York, um, I was shooting this, um, it's like this sketch, uh, where I was playing like a sports announcer or something Mm -hmm. and just totally randomly, one of the producers who I don't think I'd even met until we were on set, uh, we were just like sitting at the craft services table. Um, I was like munching on something in between takes and they were just very casual. They're like, ah, so what else you got going on right now? And, um, a good friend of mine, some, some friends from Minneapolis had like they were creative types as well and had drummed up the idea. They're like, we want to make our own cartoon. Mm. They didn't know anything about it. None of them right. studied animation. Just we'd always <laughs> been writing stuff, always yeah. been doing stuff. They're like, we want to make a cartoon. And they reached out to me and they're like, you're one of like, you know, the actors we know that's going out chasing, doing this stuff. Like, would you want to try sending us some audition takes for voices to be considered for this? Because they're really only going to use like four people. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't... And they want to keep it in the family. Exactly, exactly. And because, again, like, the, the monetary element for this yes. thing was uh, on, the, on the low end. Yeah. <laughs> um, and even though I hadn't done it before, I was super excited. I was like, yeah, totally. Like, tell me who the characters are and I'll send you a bunch of options. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did. Uh, there was the two main roles that I ended up... Uh, so, I guess I'm skipping ahead, but I, <laughs> I, I booked <laughs> yeah. on this indie cartoon that my friends were making. Um, and I played, like, this grumpy old Sean Connery-esque... Uh, Bear and mm-hmm. this like totally kind of crazy caffeinated roommate who's like totally hyper and talks crazy fast. Um, so I was in the process of recording these when this producer asked me this on this shoot, and I was like, you know what? Like a friend of mine um, are putting together this indie cartoon, and I'm doing some voice work on it. It's like a ton of fun. Uh, like we were just getting back some like animation, I think, and like looking at it and seeing it come a re- become a reality. And so I, I told her that, and she's like, oh, it sounds really fun. I was like, it is. Uh, fast forward to probably as much as a year later, I get an email from this producer again. There's been no contact in between. Yeah. Like just that, that was like, Hey, cool. Great meeting you. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, and I get an email from her and she says, Hey, do you still do voiceover? And I was like, 
Yeah. Are you a, first of all? Are you still yeah. alive? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been a year. Okay, good. Do you still voice over? <laughs> I haven't seen you post on Facebook. Are you dead? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was like, yeah. And you know what? I had I had done that project, and I think that project had come out. Yeah. Um, but it was the only animation experience I had, which was very atypical. Like, yeah. I had like purchased a mic and then like gone somewhere to like make sure I got good recording quality mm-hmm. and sent them things, got notes back. I mean, it was very yeah. atypical. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. not how the system yeah, works. Yeah. Uh, but I told her, I was like, yeah, you know, that cartoon came out and I dabbled in some other things. Um, and she's like, awesome. I just started working at an animation studio. Would you be interested in auditioning? We're looking for a couple new male voices. And so I was, of course, like, absolutely. Yeah. And I was super excited. And, you know, I, I, um, you know, I think you, as an actor, you want to approach auditions with confidence, you know, because a lot of times it's, there's stress and, you know, fear of failure or fear of success. Mm-hmm. And so like when you go into it, like you don't ever want to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to be awful at this. You know, so I tried to come in and be like, you know, I did this cartoon and I'm excited. I want to do this. And I got in there. I like, I expected to like meet my friend who is the producer and whatever. She wasn't even there. I just met the director, and the director was like... You're the guy? Exactly. It was, it was totally like that. And uh, the director, you know, was probably, understandably, uh, a lot of our stuff is very time-sensitive, and probably had a deadline. Mm-hmm. And I uh, was like, oh, yeah, you know, you're, you're so-and-so's friend, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, you ever, you ever done uh, you ever done this before? And I was like, well, I did this, this indie cartoon, I did it this way. And he was like, yeah, we don't do that here. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, and he's like, this is what we do. And what he meant was, like, that's not the style of yeah, what they do. Yeah, yeah, um, and so he he's, like, he legitimately, <laughs> he showed me, he, like, pointed to a screen in the room where they'd probably been working on a show. Yeah. And there was this, like, you know, flying guy with wings and kind of, like, DBZ type hair. Yeah. And he's, like, all right, that's our main character. And he, like, fumbled through some pages and then came and, like, slid the script towards me. He's, like, go for it. And I was, like, Okay. <laughs> and and again, it was just it wasn't even the script. It was yeah. just like our breakdown. So it's just the cues. Yes. You know what I mean, for this character, whom I don't know the show, I don't know anything <laughs> about him. I've just met this person like five minutes before. Arg! Yeah. Arg! Yeah. I will defeat you. <laughs> what flavor of ice cream is that? <laughs> yeah. And again, uh, too, like I was green enough that I'm sure there was something like that said like CMR or something, you know, for closed mouth react. I was yeah. like, whatever that is. <laughs> I'll just skip over that one. Um. You know, but, uh, so I, I did just went for it and kind of did what the best I could do. I, like, made a choice, tried to do a thing, yeah. I assume based on the way he looked, made some choices, did, through, got, like, halfway through the page, I'm sure I was, like, sweating and maybe crying. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, al- I'm always in favor of that, where if you go in cold, either, either for voiceover or live action, I, I'm like, I'll see where everybody's leaning, and I'll just try to go in the opposite direction. Not even be contrarian, I'll just be like, and just, just... Just, just go balls in. To separate and, yourself. Yeah. And, and just, you know, even if you don't get it, at least just make that mark. Because the biggest thing about auditions is, as you know, that a lot of people don't understand, it's not about necessarily getting that part. It's about them remembering you for next time. If you show them something, but like there's something else six months down the road. Wait a minute, that one dude that, yeah. you know, was a jumping jack. That guy. Let's bring that guy in to read for this. Yeah, you know? there is that element of it for sure. Like you want to, you're of course trying to get the job, but at the same time you're trying to leave a good mark with yeah. uh, the team. Um, and so, you know, I got about halfway through that page and then he was like, yeah, okay, 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 okay. And I pulled yeah. the page back and I think he legitimately just said, he's like, that wasn't awful. <laughs> uh, and he described the process. I'd be over the moon, <laughs> actually. <laughs> you know, I, like, you know what? First, I, that's, I know just enough to know that I should be very happy with that. Yeah. Um, and so I was still, I was still pretty like, I'm sure I was pretty keyed up. Mm. Um, he told me a little bit, again, we, it was very brief, but he told me a tiny bit about their process you know, about what they were doing there. And I was like, cool. He's like, you know, he's like, that's what we do. And then legitimately he was just like, he's like, so thanks for coming in. If we need anything, we'll reach out, which, you know, a lot of times as an actor, you translate that as like, farewell, see you Uh, never. (laughs) Um, And so I definitely left like expecting to never hear back from these people. Um, And it did take, I think like about a week before my producer friend reached out to me and was like, Hey, um, the director, is willing to bring you in for some background, like under five Walla stuff. It would be super short, you know. Yeah. It'd be like it was probably like fifteen minutes, or like a half hour or something like that. Like, would you be willing to do that? And I just said, yeah. I was like, yeah. Like, I, not only do I want to do this, so I want to 
like learn more. Um, but I said, yeah. And honestly, like that was the entire start, you know, a, a while ago. Um, and it slowly, slowly, slowly built up to the super awesome stuff I get to do now. That, uh, what was it, what was it like when that, that moment you sort of realized, oh, wow, I'm somebody in the American anime fandom world. I mean, what was it like when you started getting, like, asked for conventions and stuff, where people were like, wait, you do the voice of, oh, yeah. oh, 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 hello, you know, I mean, yeah. what, what, was, what was that moment when you had that realization of, wow, this is so weird. I'm like, a, I'm, like a, I'm getting to be a big deal in this niche. Mm -hmm. I try really hard to stay present, like, both in a good way and maybe in a bad way, because, like, I'm very, I can be very tunnel vision, you yeah. know, so, like, I see the thing, I'm like, okay, I'm going into audition for X, Y, and Z, like, okay, I'm going to do that, you know, and sometimes it's hard to, like, I focus really hard on taking a moment every once in a while to be like, mm -hmm. oh, I do, I, I get to do this awesome thing, mm -hmm. but I think I was actually, like, pretty far down the road before I kind of looked around and yeah. was like, oh, like. It's that moment of, how did I get here? Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's, it, 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 it's, it's, again, so fascinating, and it's not to put about how so many traditional actors, again, have, have fallen into this, and it's it's like, wow, this is what I expected, and but it's enjoyable, but it, it's just not, it wasn't on the fantasy list of dream mm -hmm. gigs. Yeah. But it's a great day gig. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, 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 a great, it's a great way to get there, too, and offering, of course, the, the flexibility, theoretically, just to pursue that other stuff. Totally. Which you've been pursuing a great deal a lot of, too. You've been producing a lot of the stuff. Talk, let's talk about that a little bit before we get into the, the cartoony stuff. For sure, for sure, yeah. Um, like, my passion outside the booth is uh, writing and producing for film and television. Mm -hmm. Like, my thing that I love is narrative comedy, you know, so like when I have the time or when I'm not doing something, like I'm working on another script, you know what I mean, or like doing revisions on a feature and 90% of the time it's comedy, it's just my, my personality, it's what I like to do. Who's your, uh, who's your comedy influences? I mean, the first person that came right to mind, which like might not, people might not think of as comedy, is Aaron Sorkin. I think Aaron Sorkin stuff is the funniest, uh, even though it's usually ripe with intense, like sometimes dark S drama. Sorkin has... A Billy Wilder quality to him in the sense that it's just it's it's again it's he writes smart people yeah just and again he lets the character he lets the characters do it mm -hmm. it's not forced humor it's not the tense of oh, okay yeah okay and Sorkin's that same way too where it's just like he lets the characters be the characters mm -hmm. and um, yeah and it's that natural style that plays out so well that's why I thought despite it's got a reputation of being a gross comedy but I thought the Hangover series mm -hmm. was brilliant. Because they're all strong character choices, and they let the characters just be themselves. Yeah, no, I enjoy that a lot, and I know some people on the production end for for those movies. Yeah, uh, I bet I've heard some some stories about the oh, epic sure. nature yeah. <laughs> of those events. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I love to do. Um, I have a a couple digital series that I put out there. Um, my most recent one, Bar Cross Lovers, just got accepted. Yeah, but say yeah, Bar Cross Lovers and Buddy System and. Yeah, uh, uh, Bar Crossed is um, just got accepted into the Oregon International Film Festival, and so nice. we're going to have a screening of that. And, um, what, and what, what is that about? Um, that's a really simple, like, so for that one, I wanted to uh, create a comedy that was, you know, it's like you were seeing a snippet of, uh, honestly, uh, like almost like a relationship or contemporary comedy like The New Girl or something. I want to yeah. create these little snippets, create stuff you could just fly through on the internet. You know, I want to interrupt people's work days. Yeah. <laughs> I want people who uh, might have to sit at a desk all day. I want them to just, like, chew through my ten episodes of Bar Cross Lovers. And so there are these snippets where we jump in on this group of, there's a group of men and a group of women, um, and they're just kind of... Uh, the, the premise is that they're at their favorite bar and uh, each night that we fall upon, somebody from their life comes into the bar that they have some kind of like awkward relationship with okay. and they have to cope with that. Like either they're going to go talk to them or they're going to hide or whatever and that gets explored. And the bartender, you know, kind of as a lot of bartenders. none of us have ever been in that situation. Exactly. Before. It'll be really hard for people to connect with. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the, you're exactly right. Like I, I felt like those are universal themes. Even if you don't drink, um, you know, you have been in a it's, public... It's, it's a fly in the social ointment. Yes, exactly, exactly. And they ramp up, and we go back and forth between the guys and the and the women. Um, and then at the end, there's a... a, a... And then they fight. Yeah, yes, exactly. And then <laughs> yeah. uh, they transform into monsters and consume right. each other. Yes. Stay tuned for the I last I will play episode. this card face down. I exactly. I draw! <laughs> Uh, but that was a lot of fun and taught me a lot. Um, the response has been great. Um, and with every one of these things, too, like I work as a as a producer and I work on, like, you know, larger projects that I am not making. Mm -hmm. um, and that informs a lot on the projects that I do make. And sure. so every step, every single time I get to do it, um, I get to learn more and more and more and work with more artists. Like, so 
with Buddy System that you mentioned, like I wrote all of that. Um, and for this one, I wanted to work with other artists, so we brought on I think six other writers. Uh, mm-hmm. Then I worked as head writer and like you know talked with them about their scripts and worked as nice. a um, like I said, a head writer providing notes and things like that. And that was super uh, educational and rewarding. It's it's interesting to be in that that head writer showrunner position because it's 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 you dictate the tone. Mm-hmm. And but you but a good showrunner, of course, you gotta find that perfect balance of of, of the push pull, and you don't want to like stifle the creativity. Yeah. But when I when I've been in that position before, with, like writing sketch comedy groups, I mean, I've I've had kids just you know want to throw blood at the audience for uh-huh. twenty minutes and stuff. Yeah. And it's like no 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 no. But you know, at the beginning of that, there's a kernel of the idea, so it's it's. That's it's a juggling act. Yeah, and there it's, are... it's an unenviable juggling act too because you're always I'm always questioning my own. All right, am I against this because it's not funny, or is it just because I didn't come up with it? Very much so. I don't, you know, I, I guess I I think like um, I don't catch myself too much, you know, like uh, ever being like like oh I wish I'd come up. I mean, of course there are jokes, they're great jokes. Right? Yes. I wish I'd come up with that all the time. Um, I, I know for a fact, like, I can take a deep breath and be like, all right, like, that joke is better than my joke, you know what yes. I mean? Sometimes it'll take a second to process that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, process that, but then, of course, the, the, the weirdest thing to do is having to explain to somebody, like, that's a funny, funny-ass bit, but it's not good for this. Yes, very much so. It's not good for the tone of this. Put that in your back pocket, and then we work on another project together, or if you just keep that and work, take it to your next gig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the delicacy, uh, delicacy, I think that's the right word, but the, or the delicate balance of also dealing with other artists can be, is yeah. its, its own thing, because like in this process I definitely learned, you know, I've worked with actors before and in circumstances like that, but this, again, like dealing with writers, and there wasn't a lot of um, like head-to-head on anything, but there yeah. were a few things like where I had, to, I had to articulate a strong feeling that I had about something, and yeah. you know, again, like that's part of the art. If you don't have those moments... I'm not saying anyone should like be fighting all the time, but if you yeah. don't have those moments, that you know, that means people are impassioned about things. Like if yes. somebody believes something, like I believe it should be like this, and I believe it should be like this, um, and you hash it out, you go back and forth. And again, as like a, a producer and a creator who's interested in other people's uh, art, mm-hmm. like I definitely I want to extend that as long as possible so that they can you know express themselves fully. So I'm not like yeah. nipping anything in the bud, going. Yeah. Like, no, no, that's not right for this. You yeah. know, like, I, I want to hear, you know, and then, like, keep bringing and re-articulating my thoughts to see. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be coach, and you gotta be cheerleader at the same time mm-hmm. if, you, if you let them down, and go there's a bicep token, you want to cultivate that, and you want to keep it mm-hmm. down. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, a uh, yeah, people just think it's just the guys in a room, like, like, making each other laugh, and it's like, <laughs> Sometimes, I but, uh, but <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, the punch-up stage, yeah. Other times, it's just management, like you are saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, uh. But if it works out well, it's a rewarding experience. Totally. And then I'm, uh, you know, like I'm in pre-pro on some other projects right now, and actually, like, um, one is comedy, and there's two other dramas actually, which is, you know, they'll be my first foray back into that for a few years. Um, and one is like a political thriller, and one is uh, just kind of a more thriller thriller. Mm. Um, I'm pretty excited. Those are pretty early, but uh, in the process. But we are getting to like actually... politics. There's not much going on in politics right I now. I know bro. not a lot I... to draw. That's why we're Pol- that. politics is the new western boo, dude. <laughs> We figured there wasn't anything in the marketplace, so we f- we should put something out there. <laughs> oh, there you go, there you go. So, um, well, we should probably t- now we got an audience. Uh, we should probably talk about hey, some friends. Of- we should probably just talk about some of the uh, cartoony stuff. Sure, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Uh, what what? If you had to pick a personal favorite, not necessarily like one that you know propelled you the career mm-hmm. or got you on the map or whatever, if you had to pick a, a personal anime uh, project to date, uh, what would what would you? Oh gosh. That's that was tough. rewarding by your own measure, your own however you define it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh man, God, it's so hard. I thought of so many projects when you said that because like they each have such different yeah, values. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I did, I did. Um, okay, if if I have to go, the first three that I thought of are some of the some of the larger ones, but I've been lucky uh, to have like some some great characters that have some complexity and some depth and some things that, that really resonated with me. Um, I think if I had to pick one in this instance, which could change tomorrow, (laughs) um, I loved playing Duman in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I love complex villains. Um, I have, like, Professor Sycamore is like family to me. Um, He's somebody that I love and respect, and, um, you know, I have a very strong connection to him. Um, And there's something about Duman's character of, like, the the villain who isn't a villain. The, uh, the, you know, the villain who's 
like portrayed as a villain, but is pursuing his own interests and has the intelligence to learn and adapt and grow. Mm -hmm. I think that 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 complexity and that arc is really powerful. The villain who thinks he's the good guy is is always the best villain. Yeah, and I mean, and ends up, and again, spoiler alert, uh, (laughs) ends up changing, you know, and understanding. He's not, you know, he's not so maniacal that he can't. That's why, I mean, I firmly believe he's the true leader of the Barons, but I'm sure other people would disagree. Uh, <laughs> a few, I know a few voice actors that would probably disagree, but that's right. I'll, I'll take him to fisticuffs over it. Indeed, indeed. So uh, let's go back to let's go back to the, the professor again in uh, Pokemon. How did how did that yeah. partic- how did that particularly evolve? Because Pokemon already having been established, and that was because. Not just with the with the online app. I mean, it seems like Pokemon in the past like two or three years has is there gone an app? through. <laughs> <laughs> the app game. I'd like to hear more. Tell like, me yeah, more really. about it. Well, you know, you what's it called? It. Pokemon it's, Catch. It's 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 yeah. It's it's, it's Pokemon called, Dance. It's called Walk Off a Cliff. Walk uh, Off a Cliff. App. <laughs> Stare at your phone. Walk Off a Cliff. cliff yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's called Walk Around and Walk Around in Parks at two o'clock in the morning. You know. I'm just kidding. I caught a bunch of Magikarp today, uh, so things are going great already. All right. Well, right on, <laughs> right on. So, but uh, it's, so basically, Pokemon seems to be going through its. Uh, some people call it a second renaissance. You know, it's it's like I, I sort of call it a third renaissance because like first time was the animated game, and then this, then was this the collectible card game, and now I think it's in its sort of the franchise in its third renaissance in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but it's you Western, right? Renaissance. Yes, basically. So uh, you got kind of got in the, in the beginning of that, though. Uh, when you got when you got the gig, how did that evolve? I mean, when did you just get a call for that? Come on in, read for it, and bada bing, bada boom. I or? mean, a little bit. It was very whirlwind. Um, the a lot of the people. Um, this was still, you know, I think I've been on the show now for like two or two years, maybe something like Sounds that. About right. Yeah. Um, and. When I got brought in, um, I had been working with a lot of the other talent, you know what I mean, some of the other directors and things like that. So, like, they were people, that, again, the booth is interesting, like, because you can work on a show for a long time, and maybe you pass people on the way to bookings, but, like, yeah. you, it's not, it's not like you're nine to five. Yeah. Where you go, like, like, hey, Allison, high five yeah. at the water cooler, you know? Um, <laughs> like, how's playing Bonnie today? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, so, I was, I was working with a lot of the talent at other places, and... You know, my name got lobbed out there, or someone you know and I heard, and so I got brought in. Uh, and I actually got brought in for the the movie that year and the series. Mm. Um, and I again, I don't know if they were at separate times or whatever, but I auditioned for both of them and ended up booking both of them. Um, and I'm not sure which I can't even remember which came first, but it was kind of whirlwind because like I was going in like doing the movie and then coming in and starting on the series. Mm. Uh, and again, like we were talking about before, it was one of those things where I think I was like pretty, I was kind of deep into it before I looked around and I was like, oh yeah, now I'm on Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it probably did, uh, one of the things that kind of cued me into is when other people would ask, you know, people were like, like, what are you up to these days? And then I'm like, like, oh, you know, I started doing this, like once I could announce it. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, like cool. Like, were you like, they're like, were you into that? Did you? I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And like, I have like toys and yeah. like, <laughs> like bouncy balls with Pokemon in it now and stuff. Um. So yeah, it was it was pretty, it was very 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 cool, and uh, it continues to be an awesome uh, family. Like I think of like those franchises, um, like Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh, especially like that's a really great family to be a part of. Yeah, which is interesting because if Pokemon's going through its 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 third renaissance, I think Yu Gi Oh has been going through its second one. Because hmm. I remember like, then the early double lots, you know, it hit its first Nadir, and then it just seemed to kind of uh, be innocent. But yeah, the past couple of years again, it seemed to you know boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom! It, like it, it, it did that. What I call that? Call it the double prong, which is like okay, fans that outgrew it originally suddenly get hit by the nostalgia bug and they rediscover it, and then when that creates interest, and then the interest creates some new kids coming in into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It's like a, a, we're trying to create a vortex. <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah. So it, 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 it creates the, 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 the nostalgia bug creates it, and that creates gravity, and then the gravity attracts some new people in into it. And, yeah, new generations, like you said. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people who now, you know, might have kids. You know, they can. Oh, they yeah. always do that too. That that one, I think, was the biggest success about uh, the last Jurassic Park movie was that it was the perfect window between people who saw it at that sweet spot age of uh, I call it between about nine and fourteen. Mm-hmm. That's what I call the prime nostalgia zone. Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. whatever you're exposed to about those ages tends to really imprint on you. Yeah. because... Two things. One, you're old enough to kind of really ingest it mm-hmm. on 
a deeper level for lack of a better term as a kid. And also too, it's a generational possession where they all generations want something to latch on to and say, this is ours. And Jurassic Park was very much like that for that. And now that decade and a half later, you know, the new Jurassic Park movie, totally. exactly what you said, everybody come back on in and bring them in. Yeah, so. I agree. And uh, you're right. Like that's too, when you start, I think you alluded to this, but you start kind of like defining your own likes a little better. You know what I mean? Yeah. You start choosing things and taking ownership over things, mm-hmm. you know, as opposed to like being brought to soccer practice by parents or yeah. something like now you're going like, I want to go see this movie or I want to put this on television. It used to be music was kind of like that back when you'd actually have to buy albums and yeah. concerts and MTV, but now everything that's seems it's very to be homogenized and everything's been, everything's been kind of static for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so I did with Yu-Gi-Oh, and then um, what? Uh, what the heck was uh, Celebrity Ghost Stories? Was oh that, my goodness! <laughs> yeah. Uh, was that just a background? Never thing? happened. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no uh, <laughs> <laughs> never heard of it. No, I, I did a couple of those um, uh, years ago. Um, that's like a Discovery ID show, which I've seen are... snippets of it. I was just curious. Were oh, you yeah. like one of the reenactors? Oh stories, yeah, or? for sure, okay, for right. sure. I played like a guy who shot his like wife in the face with a shotgun. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was intense. Not very like Pokemon. It's a little different. <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah, I got friends, I got friends in the, in the 90s, they did, they used to do, uh, The America's Most Wanted. Oh, yeah. And he actually, he actually had the cops get called on him because somebody saw him and remembered him oh from the TV. Oh my goodness, that's And insane. thought it was actually him. And I thought, that, I thought that was just a sketch comedy joke. It's like, no, it really happened to me. Wow. I had the cops said, like, well, crazy your ID, the well someone called, thought they recognized you from America's yeah, Most you. Wanted. And it's... I was like, well, that was me. I... <laughs> They I am the actor <laughs> who played that guy. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah, so I mean, there was that one where I played that 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 murderer um, <laughs> in a pretty graphic scene, uh, and I also did another one where I played like someone was seeing someone's uh, like their grandfather's ghost from World War Two or something. So I was like no, all no. like in like World War Two like you know dress uh, dress uniform. Um, and in some kind of like sepia tone flashback, like you know, talking to That'd my cool, yeah. my granddaughter. Or get to wear get to wear a World War II uniform. That's kind of cool. Yeah, anytime you can wear that uh, in a room that can't be air conditioned for sound reasons, and you're wearing a full dress uniform. <laughs> okay, perfect. all right, I stand corrected. Perfect. I stand corrected <laughs> on that. Um, the uh, Super Four, um, which I after everybody did research on, I was just like, oh, it's the, it's the Playmobil. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know the the. The not Lego. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the not, the not, fi- the not Fisher is it a hybrid between Lego and Fisher Price. Yeah, yeah. That's like the European Lego. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More <laughs> Super or less. popular overseas. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's awesome. It's definitely oriented towards younger audiences, oh, yeah. but it's one of my favorite shows to do. Um, the first season, I played like a lot of um, uh, like co-star characters who would like come in for an episode or something like that, mm-hmm. um, and. Then in the new season, I now play a series regular, um, which is – he's like one of the most fun characters I've ever gotten to play. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I know that they have a Netflix deal, but I, I know that the – like it hasn't been announced when uh, that drops. Um, Hopefully in the United States. Yeah, Some yeah, of those yeah. Netflix deals are like only for Europe or only for Italy. They're very weird. Yeah, for sure. I feel very, very, very confident and we'll get a U.S. one, but you are right. I get, might get European I mean, if they first. recorded American talent, let's, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, honestly, that um, the first season of that did air overseas first yeah. in English, even though it was our uh, yeah. our, du- our, our not, dub. Not yeah. a dub. I think they were their prelay, but um, like it was our version. Um, same with Robin Hood. It's always fun when you, you have a gig and like absolutely nobody in the country can see it. You know, I've been it's not even like a movie where you just oh here's the TV very very it's like yeah no it's you gotta you know you gotta trick your computer into thinking you're watching Netflix yeah, yeah, from yeah. England. <laughs> Robin Hood was the same way. Like people were uh, like tweeting me and going like oh just saw like an episode four where Little John does this uh, or being like hey were you this extra soldier on this and I'm like I'm like where are you watching this? <laughs> Um, and that's but, basically uh, Robin Hood with Kit. That's yeah, kids, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that one's super fun too. Again, mostly oriented towards younger audiences uh, and their shorter episodes, but mm-hmm. it is uh, really fun. And I think it's uh, like I think it's it's good wholesome fun. You know, I mean, it's the type of thing that um, will get they can get blown up. The type of thing that parents can put on and kids sure. can just watch. You don't have to like worry about anything. They'll just plow through the mm-hmm. the episodes like, or the play, DVD. Play it in the DVD in the back seat. For sure. 100% perfect for that. It doesn't involve a purple dinosaur, which we, we can all be uh, happy about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think our signature 
for that show is every single episode uh, ends with the entire group laughing together. Like, so everybody is reunited. Like, I'm okay, sure we rescued yeah. somebody or got Robin out of trouble or something. Um, and we all, we all are reunited and everybody laughs together and, like, has a hearty laugh at it. Um, right. And that, it, after you do that enough times, like, it becomes its own running joke. Um, so, like, there's plenty of uh, unused <laughs> tape of me taking the laughter way too far and turning it into, like, insane cackling. Um, oh, that's pretty like, cool. You know, just, like, like, you just be like, like, all right, that's good, Jake. That's good. Okay, we got it. I'm just like... <laughs> Um, which is not appropriate for the show. <laughs> no, but you need to send that to Andrea Romano for the next yeah. permutation of the Joker. For sure. That's 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 yeah. a that's a good that's a good cackle. Thank you very much. And I can get it hoarser and lower too, unless she wants like a child Joker. <laughs> yeah, <that's> just... <laughs> Joker flashbacks. You know, like, you never know. Just, just, God, uh... God bless them. They they've been trying so hard to figure out Batman animated wise. Yeah. Uh, for a while. Now. I mean, they've got a new DC one, and Dana, of course, does the voice of a uh, Plastic Man on it, which I'm kind of psyched for. Uh, but uh, you guys, got any questions? Yeah. If anybody has anything. I mean, even I sit know. around as I mean, you know. This, this is Jake Fake, by the way, if you don't know it. <laughs> um, I haven't played uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Like, I don't collect and play. I have quite a few friends that do, and my favorite thing to do is to uh, watch them play it. <laughs> um, I do enjoy that a lot. Uh, yeah, and I have some of them. Like, I have some of, especially, like, my character's cards, selfishly. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, like, I have a few cards from Dumont's deck. Um... Uh, I use you yeah. in my deck all the time, and I lose. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I blame the player. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but honestly, I was just actually uh, visiting with some friends in Baltimore, um, and they were like, like we were gonna like they got I think they got some new cards or something like that, and they were like, well, like we're gonna play, but like is that gonna bore you? I was like, no, please. I'm like, I'll just sit here and like sit my decaf coffee, I'm happy to to watch and. Uh, you know, uh, like I kind of understand the, the the mechanics of it, but I I gotta be out of my depth if people started, you know, being like wanting to play me for money or something. I'd be like, uh, probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Probably not. So. Who's your favorite character in the show? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, I would say my alter ego from that same season. No kidding. <laughs> uh. Man, um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. The Baryons are tough, because I do like a lot of them, but I'm not supposed to. Um, my first my first impulse was to say Ray Shadow, um, because that's one of my really good friends who plays him, and I think he does an awesome job. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think, I don't, I'm trying to find something exciting to say. Uh, I'll go. With, I'll go with Ray Shadow because uh, my friend Billy plays him, and he does just an awesome, awesome job playing. So, I mean, he plays like a character who is uh, like he comes across as uh, like he becomes buddies with Yuma, um, but he's got this like very nefarious side, and he's possessed and stuff. He does a really good job uh, with all that, and also Billy's and he's super fun to work with. So, I think that's um, probably one of my other favorite characters. Um, I wish I don't know if you were here. We chatted about uh, the the just Dumont in general a bit earlier. Like, I think Dumont is a character that is one of my favorites because of his complexity. Uh, he's a he's he's a villain, but he's not a villain. You know what I mean? Like, he's he plays a villain, but that's that. He, not only does he not believe he's a villain in any way, he's not trying to do anything. Like, he's not going like this is just a mindless thing I want to do to hurt people. Like, he has a belief structure and thinks he's pursuing, like, his own best interest and his group's best interest, but he's also smart enough and enough of, like, a leader to, um, just, like, try and achieve goals but stay open and listen to people. And so, as I said before, spoiler alert, but he does, like, he, he experiences a transformation, which we don't always get, you know, because um, just not all characters get that opportunity to have a transformation in a show. Uh, and I really, I really did love that. Um, also Dumont's backstory is like so cool when we, uh, explored that arc about his, you know, like previous life, basically, uh, it's just so awesome. Like there's some really like heart wrenching, um, episodes about his Pegasus and stuff. Like just the, 
very layered, which again we don't we don't always get. Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon do a great job with that stuff. I mean, especially of course like Gundam has an incredible canon, you know what I mean? So you don't ever have to worry about that being super surfacey. But you know, and other stuff again, like I'm not gonna lie, um, like on Super Four, <laughs> which again is oriented towards younger audiences, like uh, my character on the new season, like. They didn't provide me a lot of backstory about it. <laughs> They're like, he's this type of guy. And I'm like, good enough, here we go. He likes candy canes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and so anytime we get that, and that's, again, I'm not I'm not diminishing Super 4 at all. I was just saying, you know, when coming into it, um, there was less, you know, historical information, I guess, and stuff presented uh, to provide the character with depth. The depth comes from the, like, I build it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I build that. Um, whereas in <coughs> those other shows, it's it's present in the world, which is is great when, when, when you've got it. What, uh, were you ever in contention for something that you really wanted at the time, didn't get it, and then kind of glad you didn't? Oh, Might have been like you, like, you're like, oh, good, I, yeah, I dodged that bullet. Um, you know, that's interesting. Um, there have been I don't think it's ever been anything that deliberate where, like, I went in for something and then it ended up being, like, a real mess or disaster or, mm. uh, you know, that, that I know of yet. I could be in the middle of a show right now if yeah. it turns into that. Mm. <laughs> no, uh, I don't think so. Because um, you never know until later. You know what yeah. I mean? You get, like... Yeah, yeah you hear the horror halfway. stories. Like, yeah. oh, I'll be glad you didn't get that kick, man. It was... Uh, yeah. uh, but I have worked on things before, like, uh, maybe not shows, but, like, with... Um, companies that were working on something like where I did I did you know like maybe a smaller role on something and I was like hmm I'm not sure if I'm feeling that and then uh, like when they reached out to me later I was like ah you know like I'm not available right now and yeah. then like saw future things and I was like yeah I think it was the right call not to do that mm-hmm. so I think sometimes like uh, no, yeah, knowing what you want to be a part of and associated with yeah. is valuable yes. like we all want uh, opportunity we all want work we all want to play characters but <clears throat> then like there, there's, there's a big thing about I mean in acting they always say there's no such thing as a bad gig and take all the work and get it but I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in if you're not feeling it and yeah I mean don't don't let don't let your tactical like wants you know it's like possibly screw up your strategic you know yeah. it's like future needs as it is and yeah that that it's wisdom like that that yeah you'll like it'll, it'll save you later on and sometimes it's all it is is experience and age you know I mean it's hard it's a hard thing to tell like even younger me, you know what I mean? I don't know if I could have gone back in time and looked at younger me and been like, "Hey, be judicious about what you do." You know what I mean? Because I'm sure younger me wouldn't have listened. I'd have been like, "Nah, get out of here, old man. You're annoying. Um, I hate you." I'll do that Cinemax movie. Yeah, I don't care. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Off comes the shirt. All right. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Never happened. Don't Google it. <laughs> Jake Pig shirtless. Well. <laughs> Yeah, great question. Um, it's probably like ninety five percent solo. Uh, you know, we of course have like an engineer and a director, and sometimes we have people from the the company as well. You know, like from whoever whoever it might be. Um, <clears throat> Like the, I guess they're not really the client, but you might call them the client. Like whether it's from Pokemon or something like that. Um, but in the booth itself, usually it's like totally solo. Uh, yeah. Group stuff, a lot of us love it. You know, um, a lot of us would do it every time we have an opportunity to. Um, but I think mostly it has to do with like scheduling and efficiency. Um, I've got to, gotten to do plenty of group records in the past or like dual records uh, where you've got some important scenes between two characters. Um, and those are always amazing and some of the best times. But also like if you're doing a group record on something with prelay and they – they tell you it's okay to like be a little loose on the script. Like <laughs> those are the best, but you also understand once once you're doing it, like why it's so expensive. Because like you know you'll do that five or six times, and like probably three quarters of them go blue or become takes that like can can't get used because <laughs> people are doing crazy stuff, which All isn't it. bad. Like it's funny, but again, whether or not you can shoehorn it into you know what you're doing is the is the complexity. Yeah. Big. 
big Hollywood still wants everybody to think that the entire cast always assembles into. Mm-hmm. When most time with the Disney stuff and the Universal and DreamWorks everything, they'll have one scene where they'll bring everybody in together just for the promotional materials. Yeah. Okay, here's all the principal stars uh-huh. recorded, but it's just for that one bit, and sometimes it's not even that. They've already recorded it. They're just bringing them on in for the promotional materials exactly. and stuff. And you had a, would you have another like a follow up part to that or? I mean, it wasn't really a question. It was just a statement. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Like whenever I watch big group scenes in anything animated, mm-hmm. I'm always wondering like whether or not those people are actually in the same room together, or if it's just like stopping for recording. Yeah. Totally. Like one of the ones that I did recently was it was fun because it was kind of like for uh, or not kind of it was for more of a battle sequence of sorts. Like there was a lot going on, so it was very fun. Like we were all you know, engaged. It wasn't just like chit chatting. So it really, the room felt alive. You know, it felt like all the stuff was happening because you know we're all doing our like our physical things. I mean, we're like ah, you know what I mean? Like we're all doing it, and you see the other people across from you doing it. And if you are supposed to call out to somebody, you actually see them. You're like, Dad, you know what I mean? Like you're doing it, yeah. and that's what makes it yeah feel like super alive. Like there's electricity in the room. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eric Stewart, because he's Eric Stewart. <laughs> Eric Stewart uh, is a good friend of mine. I would, uh, if there were, if there's ever an opportunity, um, we should, we uh, hopefully at a future convention, he and I will, he and I will duel, and I'll, I'll do my best to crush him. Although it seems super unlikely. <laughs> well, um, we have to, we have to wrap it up. But uh, let me uh, wrap it up with this. What's What's the great dream project that you have yet to realize? Oh, great question. Somebody just said, okay, here's a big bag of money. Make uh, whatever you want. Just get it to us in a year. What would you do? Yeah. You know, that's that's a great question. I'm going to just, I'm going to keep it even closer to home and go like, I don't need a great big bag of money. Um, I have a, a feature comedy that, um, that I think is like super producible and very affordable. Um, it's like, it's a buddy road comedy um, about uh, a <laughs> A guy who gets dumped and then goes and apologizes to all his ex girlfriends for being a jerk, um, oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's like it's something that I really uh, you know I've had a bunch of like you know uh, invited readings for it and stuff like that, and I feel like it's in good uh, good place, and that's definitely like my my thing at the top of my little cork board, being like that I know I'm gonna make that, and I'm trying to figure out how to how right. to get the path to that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think that's kind of the the thing that I'm looking up to while I'm making all these other things. I, I still I still have that in the in the in the forward view mirror. <laughs> if there's sure. such a thing as a forward view mirror, <laughs> um, and then on the animation end, I mean, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of projects and friends that are in uh, like great shows. People a lot of times will ask me like, "What's a franchise?" You know what I mean? Um, I was so beyond excited uh, when um, I got to become part of the Gundam uh, mm-hmm. franchise this year, which is just awesome. There are a couple like. Uh, shows that you know, like again, I'm, I never, and I'm not looking to be like, oh, I want this role on that show because all of my friends that are on shows mm-hmm. are super talented. You know yeah, what I mean? like someone's like, ah, don't you want to be like so and so? And it's like, well, no, uh, you know, uh, Mark Thompson is great at that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, like I wouldn't. It ever- is. It's, it's careful. It's almost just like, okay, here, here's here's a, here's a bunch of DVDs of stuff that. Uh, hasn't been optioned yet that mm-hmm. Japan and Korea has put out. Yeah. You know, find something you like. So, uh, you know. Yeah, like so if they do, I mean, some some things stuff that'd be really fun to to join would be like you know if they as they keep churning out more um, Transformers stuff. Like I love Transformers, um, and I would like that's something I would definitely be trying to sight in on and like how to how to get involved in I, the future. I I'd be I'd be so divided on that because I'm I'm a G one or nothing guy because that's Fair just. Enough. That unfortunately, that's just how I. How I, I, I <laughs> that's my geek DNA imprinting. Yeah. So, but if they, I, I've heard been hearing rumors that they they want to do just a straight up, just a G one era. Really? Yeah, there've been. Again, Hasbro is just so. So you're torn about that, then. You're very well. Hasbro, they, they, they still just don't know what quite what to do. I mean, and and since GI Joe is floundering, and I'm, I'm a big toy nerd, so I I hear all this, but it's weird too yeah. how. The toy company is kind of in charge of all this animation and stuff, and they have the creative control over it. And they've kind of, I think, proven that they they still just don't quite know how to steer it. You know, 
even far back in the original day when they killed off Optimus Prime and they realized what a horrible mistake that was. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they changed the ending of, of, of the G.I. Joe movie where Duke was supposed to die and instead he's in a coma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the, the softball. That... But, I, but I have been hearing the, the video game, the, the G1 uh, video game mm-hmm. uh, caused uh, generated a lot of heat. And again, too, it's that it hit, hit the nostalgia buttons of my generation. Mm-hmm. So I've been... There's been big snippets that uh, maybe uh, next year at San Diego they're gonna do just a straight up. Maybe we'll do like a, a G, it's a G1 era G1 designs for Transformers. That'd be awesome. So work on that Scatman's credits. Yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> yeah. For, <laughs> get after Octobots it. Octobots transform and roll out. <laughs> I just finished the uh, the original uh, the comic series from back then the actual comic books. Oh, the Marvel ones. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 No, I love retro comics that are a little clunky. I love them. So that was like a real treat. That was for me. that was the big dichotomy. It was like Transformers. The the, the cartoon was awesome, but I thought the the, the comic was terrible. Oh, it's, it's pretty bad. GI yeah. Joe. The cartoon was terrible, but the comic under Larry good. Hama was fantastic. Ah, nice. For about the first. 65 issues or so. That, yeah. I just love I love a lot of that retro stuff. Like so many of the storylines and the covers and some of the art is just so incredible. Oh, the art, the, the cover art was always beautiful. One of my one of my favorites is um, it's like uh, like from the first half. It's I think it's called it's like issue 18 or something like that. It's called Game Over, and it's this one where um, Optimus Prime gets beaten in a like he and Megatron elect to fight in a video game. Nah. And, the, and the winner uh, like goes on, and the loser will destroy himself. Right. And Optimus Prime loses, but Megatron cheated. Of course. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, like the, the the title is like Game Over, and it shows like this pixelated Optimus Prime on this like old school computer screen. It's just nice. so specific. It's amazing. <laughs> I I always love the issue five with Shockwave. The Transformers are all dead. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. classic faded one. one. The art was terrible. So, unfortunately, that is uh, going to be our time. Um, where can people keep up with you on uh, social media outlets? Yeah, um, honestly, uh, Twitter is the best way to get a hold of me, and I'm just at my name. So at J-A-K-E-P-A-Q-U-E at Jake Paik. Um, I am on Facebook. Uh, and you can totally add me on there. It's just like I'm a little bit slower to get to that sometimes. So, uh, And also, like I know I just said it, but like I do try and be super responsive. Like People sometimes reach out with me about simple stuff, like a question like, hey, what's a good microphone that I can get for X dollars? Or people like uh, rec- somebody recently asked me, like they DM'd me uh, like a pretty – like a serious question and I did my best to answer it like I'm no life coach or anything but they're asking me about like failure and things in life like hey I went out for something and it was really hard and it devastated me and sent me back I don't know if I want to pursue this thing anymore and I mean I just talked to them about you know my experience with that and, and like how I cope with failure and understanding on focusing uh, on like what's with, within my control and what's outside of it and you know how to process that so anyway just if there's um you know, hit me up and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you with <laughs> with whatever. Uh, and if it's outside of my depth of uh, whatever, I'll be like, hey, like I, I don't know a ton about this. <laughs> you know?